by the time the Olympics came around, I was the poster boy for that 06 Games. Coming into an Olympics where I should have been enjoying that prosperity, I guess, I had no interest in all the stuff that comes with that. And I couldn't figure out a way to get past the parts that I didn't like to enjoy the parts that I love. It's easy for somebody to say it's not about the medals when they have a huge collection of medals or when they win all the medals. It's not so easy when you come in as the favorite overwhelmingly with a huge expectation placed on you by the world, essentially, and you completely fail. In the combined, it looked like things were going well. I had one run of slalom left with a massive lead to win my first gold. And between the two runs, looked up on the board, and my name just disappeared off the scoreboard. And the guy who was in second went to first, and everyone else moved up. Some fan on, with slow-mo happened to see me hook a tip that no one else saw. I didn't feel it. No one else saw it. it took 45 minutes for him even to catch it. They reviewed it, disqualified me, and I'm out. No medals for Bodie Miller. It was like, you simply will no longer be here. I'd been skiing well up on the upper part of the course, was being pretty aggressive. But when the trail turns there, that's a really hard right-footed turn. And it comes over a blind roll. And that roll was really chalky. It was like really dry snow. So I came in there, hooked up, got caught in the gate, popped up to the outside. I landed on my right ski, pointing straight into the woods. I was so far forward that I had nowhere to go. In a ski boot, you're trapped. You know, your lower leg is locked into a certain position. I was falling to my right on my right ski in a flying pirouette. I look up and I'm seeing there's just a wall of trees in front of me and there, there's no gaps. I would have gone into the trees head first at 60 miles an hour. I believe it was certain death or paralysis or something bad in there. So that was a microcosm of a lot of different stuff at that point. Things were looking pretty grim. I had one last time where I was like, if I can jam my tail in, I can tip my balance just enough over that I can get back on my inside edge and turn away from this. I kind of like put a little extra into my left leg behind me and I stuffed my tail in. It kind of knocked me just a little bit and I came back and came to a stop and knew I had just blown another very good chance of winning a medal. I was prepared to win and should have probably won that event. Standing on the side of the Olympic course with my boot halfway out of my ski and the breathing heavy and watching guys go down to win medals of different colors, marveling at the, the narrow margin that I just escaped death. And that was just my willpower. There was no question. That was more powerful for me than winning five medals at that Olympics. It really was. That moment was so intense for me. It was one of the first times where my instincts and everything really were crisp, like I was on it. It wasn't about what the expectations were. It wasn't about a comeback. It was just about being there and skiing. Coming into the next Olympics in Vancouver, I was 100% there. That's where I won a set of medals. In Sochi, where it was four years later, I was the oldest racer to, to really have a chance. Even though I was old, I was prepared to ski like I was 20. It was just a matter of that switch going off in my head. I will not forgive myself if my last Olympics isn't all heart, isn't all, you know, gas pedal. And I was willing to take the risk. That third place medal meant more in the scheme of things than a gold could have at that moment. It was just exactly what I needed to get to sort of reaffirm what I believed.